Yeah, probably good. I got um, it. I got it. You bet. So I am sharing screen and let me get to fight the new drug. So you guys did a good job with that. You guys read articles or looked around, found a couple of short videos on fight the new drug. I actually sent you to um, a part of the site that had three different videos, but this is the actual, when you, when you load it up and go to fight the new drug, let's see what, what do you see when you first do that? There you go. So it does this. They're actually Christians that do this, but they call it a non-religious. I think that's, so they're trying to, they're trying to use science, use facts. And actually you'll notice that when people are honest with facts and honest with science, it always lines up with scripture uh, beautifully and powerfully. But these guys on purpose wanted a really broad audience. Um, and it was right here on this uh, Get Started. I sent you to right, I think that's what you saw. Um, a lot of you watched uh, this first video, Porn Affects the Brain, uh, Porn Affects the Heart. So why don't we watch this one right now? We'll watch Porn Affects the World, then we'll break into small groups and we'll talk about it. On April 25th, 2015, an earthquake hit Nepal. Within 54 seconds, it had leveled over half a million homes and killed nearly 10,000 people. It was devastating. But what happened next was incredible. Almost immediately, neighbors from China rushed across the border to clear rubble. Within 15 minutes, India had mobilized a full-scale relief effort, including medical supplies and rescue dogs. Before the day was over, people, money, and supplies were pouring in from 60 countries, 35 relief organizations, and countless businesses. Consider the world. More than ever before, we're able to help reduce human suffering anywhere from natural disasters to a child's medical bills. In a remarkable way, technology can focus our attention and rally us around a single worthy cause, combining millions of individual acts of kindness into a massive force for good, or combining millions of individual selfish acts into a massive force for harm. If the private act of viewing porn can rewire a brain, devastate a relationship, and destroy a family, what happens when that act is multiplied by 100 million? What happens when it isn't just you seeking ever more explicit pornographic material, but your next door neighbor, your teacher, your doctor? What happens when it's half your country? Today's rising generation is facing the issue of pornography at a level our world has never seen. In 2015, 4.3 billion hours of pornography were watched on a single website. That's half a million years. What are the consequences of 4 billion hours when pornography has been shown to increase marital infidelity by over 300%? What are the consequences when 88% of the scenes depict aggression or violence? What are the consequences when the porn industry has now been linked to abuse on set, child exploitation, and even human trafficking? When we discover that products are tied to abusive things, like child labor, we're willing to change what we buy. Isn't it time we had the same conversation about pornography's human impact? Somewhere, right now, actual lives are being made far worse by the million little mouse clicks around the world. So, choose love and humanity. Click on something else, take a stand, and pour your time and energy into something, anything, that might just make this world a little better for all of us. Cool. I like the... Uh... I like the tone, I like the positive nature, I like the feel that we're gonna accomplish something together, uh, and I like the, uh, the frankness. Let's, uh, uh, we'll put you into some small groups, and you guys can talk about the videos you watched, it may not have been that one, but just some of your takeaways from that whole process, let's see. Let me, uh... Okay, there you go. Just go ahead and click on your, uh, your small group and click on into that.
Uh, let me just hear one or two takeaways from some of the things you guys were sharing in some of the, which video did you watch? Somebody say what video you watched and a takeaway. I watched the one about the brain. Okay. And one thing that I thought was really interesting about it was the way that they compared a porn addiction to any other addiction about like drugs mm. and how the worse you get, the more addicted you get, the worse your addiction comes. You seek out farther and farther stuff and you just go down like a spiral of degradation, basically. Um, that is fascinating. They call it tolerance. And uh, in any addiction, you uh, one one beer gives you a buzz, but after a while, that doesn't give you a buzz anymore. You need two beers. That takes you a little deeper. Uh, after a while, that doesn't do it. It takes three beers to give you a buzz. I was counseling a guy um, with an alcohol problem who had to drink 12, a whole 12 pack every night uh, to even feel it. So he'd just been in it so long. You know, for one, that's a major commitment to lifestyle. You know, it's just you're going to the bathroom all the time, you're drinking. It's a, you got to get a giant 12 pack, a 24 pack in the fridge and only last you two nights. It's like, oh my gosh, just, uh, but, uh, but certainly that can happen with porn and any of the addictions. That's very true. Okay. One more, somebody else. Did anybody watch the one on the heart? Yeah, I did. Okay. And I just, I thought that it was very interesting. Um, how they reemphasize the idea that it's not good for a relationship. Um, I think they said that two or three times throughout the video is that they, it's just not good for the relationship. And yeah, um, I just, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, somebody wrote in their paper, or at least a few people wrote in their paper about how that video mentioned that weird study where this king took a bunch of babies and wouldn't let them be touched and they died. And it's just like, isn't that super creepy? That would not be allowed now. Um, but you know, that's horrible, but it does underline the fact that we need healthy human touch and contact. Uh, as an aside, that's interesting in days of COVID, how that works because people just aren't getting, hugged or touched uh, in a healthy way as much. That can be, uh, plenty of you guys have lots of wonderful people in your life, uh, but some people that don't, they're just, uh, they get hungry for that. You get skin hungry in a, in a meaningful way. But, um, but yeah, that, that porn uh, takes that away. Um, in general, let me just ask this. What is Ozark doing right? or what is what could Ozark do more? Is Ozark doing anything positive to help people on campus with this issue? And if they are, what is that? Or if they should be doing something, what would that be? What's your opinion on how Ozark is handling this issue and just the challenges it may face to students, to professors, to just anybody on campus? I think, I know I've heard a lot of people talking about there's a lot of counseling people on campus, which is a big bonus. And I know I've heard in the past that dorm floors are obviously really close and stuff happens and people are open with what they're going through. And I know that there were a couple guys on one of the dorm floors in Strong that were going through uh, the freedom fight last semester, I think. Awesome. That's good. And that's certainly been my impression, but I, I just wanted to know. Anybody else want to speak into that? Uh, yeah, I also think that um, Ozark through um, RAs, they just create like an environment where you are, you know, you feel welcome and you feel safe enough to share what you're struggling with. So I think that helps a lot being able to have those people that can speak into your life in a positive way. That's awesome. I, I uh, once again, that had been my impression, but I just wanted to kind of update on that. Um, I think that there are some counseling resources if it's if it's that serious and certainly the garrises but then um, more professional counseling if you really need that or want that um, the school will pay for a few sessions and but then in terms of just really healthy connection and accountability one thing that uh, some people have tried accountability and it didn't work 
And that's because it wasn't done right, doesn't do, wasn't done well. Um, when accountability is done right, one of the most important variables, well, for first, it has to be confidential. You have to know 100% that, that uh, nothing's going to be shared outside of that place. But then there's like six C's of accountability, but confidentiality would be one of those. Christ-centered would be another. But two that I think are really important to balance would be challenge and compassion. And that if it leans too far either way, that it's not effective. That if, uh, if there's a, a situation where it's just challenge, but very little compassion, so people share stuff and they get kind of blasted, that that's not going to be effective. That's not going to continue. Or the opposite. Uh, if there's not enough challenge, it's just all compassion. It's just somebody shares that they, uh, they messed up and everybody's, ah, well, hey, everybody messes up, you know. Then uh, there's something really wrong with either way. But if it's a balance of challenge and compassion, people are just real loving and understanding and caring. But they're also, hey, but what's going to make a difference this week? You know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? That, uh, that if there's a good balance of that, then that's kind of what we've been talking about in, in a lot of different venues, this truth and love kind of thing, trying to really hold up both high. But if you can do that, then it can be really powerful and effective. Cool. Hey, we have really enjoyed the semester. Shannon, you want to you wanna say anything wise and wonderful? You want to um, sprinkle holy water on this group because, you know, you were, we're sending them off into the universe. In an amazing way. It in a way, completely, because we do have our unique final. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You want to share I, that with us? I don't want the students to know that all my wise and wisdom and sarcasm is scripted, and I didn't know I was supposed to be funny or inappropriate. Oh. Okay. Well, you're <laughs> always inappropriate, Shannon. So I know, but it's scripted. I plan, I <laughs> and I just didn't plan anything, so I feel dull and boring. Oh, and okay. Syphilis, but that's just old hat. Shannon, I always hope you'll fit syphilis into every conversation. That's, um, <laughs> in fact, we have some friends that would always, Shannon would walk up and they would look at their watch because they wanted to see how long it was before she said uterus. So um, that's just, you know, that's, that's Shannon. I, that's okay. my spiritual gift, so bug off. We're so proud of you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to look at our website, our Canvas page. Let's get out of that. Cool. And out of that. On April 25th, 2015, an earthquake. And here we go. So in announcements, if you will go uh, after class, if you'll go into announcements, we put in the final exam schedule for everyone, but we also put this in. What we'd like to do for the final exam is, um, yours is scheduled for Tuesday, December 8th from one to four. But what we'd like to do is meet with each of you for the final. We'll meet with each of you on Zoom individually for about five minutes. We want you to tell us out of all the topics covered in the class, which three do you think will help you most in life and or in ministry, either one. So you, it's kind of a pick three. You pick three that kind of stood out to you, three topics that we've covered in this class that you think are gonna be helpful in your back pocket, either for your life or for your ministry, that we'll use the same Zoom that we're using today. It's the same meeting ID and passcode. And our day is Tuesday, but each of you will just be there for five minutes. And so we'll start at one and we're going in alphabetical. So you see there's, John at one and Grant at 105, 110, boom, 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 all the way down. So take a look at that. And uh, that'll be our last time to get together. But that'll be kind of cool because I'm looking forward to actually getting to speak with each of you just for a few minutes um, on our own. Okay. Any final questions for me? Okay. Any uh, amazing wisdom? from Shannon, any, uh, just say syphilis one more time, would you please? Just, no? I, I, I don't feel led to say that. I, okay, okay. Yeah, gonorrhea, this, chlamydia are coming to me because they're hard <laughs> to spell. 
like hard to spell, easy to catch. Is that what the t-shirt says? Okay. That's what the t-shirt says. That's what the t-shirt says. Okay. Hey, we've really enjoyed you guys as a class. Hope to have you in other classes that we do. We'll see you um, next week for five minutes. Looking forward to it. You guys have a great day. Bye.